Next up, we have a big one, not necessarily difficult, but just a really commonly used part of JavaScript and strings in particular, something called template literals. String template literals, essentially these are special strings where we can add in information, expressions, other variables, data inside the string and spit out one string by the end. So here's a simple example. Don't worry about the syntax just yet, but I have a string, I counted, and then some weird characters, three plus four sheep, and it's turned into I counted seven sheep. So the first thing you need to know about template literals in general is we use backtick characters around the string. It's hard to tell, but those are not single quotation marks right here. This and this, those are both backtick characters, which are usually located above the tab key on a typical keyboard that I've used at least. It is where the tilde key is, a little squiggly line, the Enya, is that what it's called in Spanish? I might just be completely making that up but it's above the tab key. So we can make a string with back ticks just like that, and it gives us a resulting string. So this is another way that you could escape characters or escape quotation marks. If you want to do, he said, LOL, I don't have to worry about single or double quotes because I'm not using either one. I'm using back ticks around the string. So I could put double and single quotes in there, no problem. For example, that's a valid string if I use back ticks. But the real meat of these expressions of template literals is that we can embed information. And the trick, the secret, is this set of characters right here. Dollar sign, and then curly braces. So on its own, that will break JavaScript. It doesn't like you. But if you put that inside of backtick characters, dollar sign, curly braces, this is going to evaluate to something. So whatever is in here, like one plus five, will be run first. This will be turned into a string once it is finished, and then we end up with one string like this string six. Usually, we don't just have a string like this. Usually we have other information or characters in there. You owe me, and then we could have dollar sign, curly braces, 100 plus that many. You owe me 219,037. So this is a secret, once again, back ticks, curly braces with a dollar sign in front. This will not work in a regular string. So if I tried it, one plus three, I end up with the string, dollar sign, curly braces, one plus three, not ideal. If we use back ticks, this is kind of like an escape character. It gets out of the context of the string and JavaScript treats it as such and it evaluates it in this case as a math expression, as an addition, but we can do anything in there. Well, almost anything. You don't want to write super, super long pieces of code, but here's a really common example. If you have a variable and you want to spit out that variable as part of a string, like welcome back, Ziggy31, we can do it like this. So I'll show you another example. Let's say we have two variables, animal and sound. So animal will be pig and sound will be oink. I can create a template literal that follows this pattern animal says sound. So pig says oink or pig say oink or something like that. If I wanted to do that, I would need to add in the variable animal first instead of those back ticks. And then I'll add a space so that we have a space after the string. You can see my result down here already. And then I'll add in just the word says, pig says, and then another dollar sign, curly braces, sound. Pig says oink. Now, string template literals are new-ish in JavaScript. A couple of years ago, they weren't an option. We had to resort to concatenating strings together, which really sucked. It would look like this. Animal plus space says space plus sound. So we always had to break up our quotes. Um, and if we wanted to add something afterwards, like an exclamation point, I would then do sound plus quote exclamation point. Pig says oink, but if I go back to my string template literal with the up arrow, I can just add an exclamation point right there. So it's really easy to read, it's easy to write. You don't have to worry about opening and closing your quotes and plus signs. You just use those dollar sign curly braces. And what you're doing here is something called interpolating. You are interpolating data inside of a string. So we have a regular string, like something says 
and then we interpolate sound, which is a variable. And as the examples show, you can also do more than just put a variable in there as is. You can run some simple code. Again, you don't want to put super long stuff in here, but there's nothing stopping you from it. We could do username.2 uppercase, or I could do animal. Let's just recall this line again right here and do sound.2 uppercase like that. And we get pig says, Oi. <laughs> now here's another example. This one's a little more complex. I have three variables. I have an item, which is cucumbers, a price, which is 199, and a quantity, which is four. And I wanted to print out a string that says you bought four cucumbers, if that's what quantity is. The total price is $7.96. Using a template literal, it's really easy. The one thing I'll point out is that I have two dollar signs here because the first one or the second one rather, is used to interpolate price times quantity. That will go away, leaving a number, and then the original dollar sign up front will be left as an actual dollar sign in the string. So here's one more example. Let's say that we're opening up a bar in the US or something where you have to be 21 years old to enter. And I wanna print out a string using these variables. So we have min age and your age. And I wanted to follow the pattern of, you must be 21 to enter, you're currently 19, please come back in two years, or whatever the correct age range is. So I could do something like this, back ticks, you must be, and then dollar sign, min age to enter, and then we'll just do come back in, and then another dollar sign curly braces, we'll take min age and subtract your age from it, and then add the word years afterwards. So you must be 21, to, let's do 21 or older to enter, come back in two years. And I know this seems like um, a lot of work for something stupid, not that exciting to do with age and min age or animals and noises, pigs and oinking. But once we get to more complex things, think about it this way. If we were making a Reddit application where we had, or let's just say comments on a blog, every comment follows the same pattern where we, we probably have something like, posted X minutes ago by and then user. So we would have a, potentially a template literal like this. Posted X minutes ago and then X, instead of calling it X, we would go with minutes or elapsed time or something by user. And we would do this for every single comment that we were trying to display. So we would have a list of them, maybe 100 comments. And for each one, we would put them through this template. And we haven't seen how to do that yet. We haven't talked about looping or collections of data. But that is when these become especially useful, is when you're defining an actual template you're reusing. So these are kind of silly examples, I know. But I promise they become really, really useful later on. So template literals, the main takeaways, again, back ticks, not single quotes. And we use dollar sign curly braces inside in order to write expressions which are just treated as regular JavaScript. It's treated as if you were not inside a string at all. And then whatever that evaluates to is turned into a string and put inside the resulting string.